What is up guys, it is Epiphanies here, rousing the haters and finding myself in a state of approval. So I got in a few new subscribers last month and this month, and I'm really like thrilled about it. I think I would like to take, take a second to thank everybody who's uh, subscribed, subscribed to my channel, liked, commented, and subscribed, and all that stuff. Really, really great. Thank you all. So I bought a USB mic, so the volume might be a little shaky because there's no volume control on this thing, and I, I apologize if like maybe it comes out too low or too loud. I really try to get the uh, audio balanced out before I publish this to YouTube. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible. So this is a vindication episode. And vindication episodes are basically where in my past I had like red pill thinking or I stuck to my guns about something or I had a argument with somebody or, or premise of thinking once again. And I was proven right by time especially after finding MGTOW. So with this instance in my life uh, and the uh, aftermath and as I was going through it, I developed a few sayings. And one of those sayings was, is if a woman, if a guy likes a woman, she doesn't care. And if she doesn't care, nobody cares. But if a guy likes a woman and he doesn't care, he'd better watch out. So as interesting as that was now, now, when I, when I say, like, when I, when I'm now saying that, when I now say that saying, sorry, <laughs> I usually mean it to mean that, uh, when I say watch out, I mean just be cautious. Like, I would like to note here and now that never did I denote that last part to mean, uh, to be fearful of a woman, to, to, uh, cower before her, her so-called feminine power and that, that that BS um, saying about hell hath no fury that a woman scorn. It's like, no, that's only because she lives in a system in which she can victimize a person for the slightest thing and get away with it. If there were consequences, they would not even come at you that way. But like that saying that I've just I've just repeated, ugh, it it really talks about the personality and the mind frame of people that. You, you can't really do anything right. Uh, even if you give her what she wants, she's still going to, you know, she's going to hate and resent resent you for it. And, you know, going back to the uh, the whole model and the idea of, you know, the, the biblical scriptures. And I understand, like, you'll have to bear with me with this because I feel like the what I what I have to say on the matter is very relevant. Um, you know, what happened to Adam in the biblical narrative? He gave in to Eve. And did she love him? Did she even respect him? No. So I developed, uh, like when realizing that, I developed one of my cardinal rules is that if a woman wants something desperately and intensely of you, do not give it to her. Because if you do, she won't respect you. She might hate you. And in my case, the, with this woman, uh, they'll slander your name. They'll poison the well so that your, your mutual friends turn on you and you have no dating prospects amongst those former mutual, mutual friends, but it's important because if you give them what they want, once again, that they might hate you for a period of time, but they will have to respect you because you told them no. So the cliff notes version is this. I had a best friend. He had a girlfriend. This girl who he grew up with was madly in love with him. So she turned to me because we're, um, you know, me and my best friend would hang out so much that she'd see me enough that she developed a type of low-level affection for me. She decided to sharpen her claws on me, you know, because th that that's normally what I what I would experience whenever I dated a girl who was overweight, is that she would get with me for a little while, and then she would monkey branch on to another guy. Now a lot of women do this, but uh, but when you have a plus-sized to fat woman, they they do this. You know, in the initial phase, like, because this is when I was much younger. This is when she was also young. And, you know, they, they, they have an end game in mind. Their end game is always to find that top 20% of a, of a man. And you're just not it. Or I should say, I, I just wasn't it. So realizing that, but not completely being cognizant of it, I completely backed off. Now, I, I found other excuses uh, unconsciously that my brain was just like, here, say this. And it, and it basically went like that. So because I, like once, once again, just like I said, because, uh, she, I didn't reciprocate her feelings. She ended up, you know, um, slandering me to, you know, all of her friends and all of my mutual friends. And he, here was the red pill moment 
was that they got me, they like they started to undermine my own confidence in my decision, which is something um, you should you should endeavor to to not allow anybody to do to you. But I started to feel bad because why? Because I didn't say yeah because um, I didn't you know kowtow to her whims because I didn't fawn over her and tr and trace around behind her like some you know lost affectionate puppy. So culminating in all of these uh, different events, well, f first and foremost, I'd like to state, I don't know if I previously stated this, <laughs> I've been editing this like quite a bit, trying to get it as polished as possible, but, um, uh, you know, she was stalking me over Facebook for one. It was really, it was a really weird situation where I was like, you know, who's this? And she's like, oh, friend me and you'll find out. So I thought it was a bot and I ignored her. And one day she came up to me and said, hey, how come you didn't respond to my friend uh, friend request? And I was just like, well, what friend request? So uh, jumping way forward uh, when there was like a, a breakdown and, you know, our non-relationship, I want to state that very clearly, you know, uh, her one of her friends just decides to rake me over the coals and starts reading me this riot act about uh how you know she's this super awesome person and i'd be lucky to have her and how dare like you know i i basically spurn her affections and hurt her heart but coming to the end of it i recently you know we recently ran into each other once again through another mutual friend and he was one of the people who just kind of he didn't really stick by me which is fine but he he just removed himself from the situation anytime somebody said something about it he was just kind of like, i don't know which is which is a great response that that to me really proves that you know someone's like listen i'm not going to get involved i'm not going to pick a side even though she was really close with this with this guy and you'll have to forgive me for this incredibly bit this incredible bit of schadenfreude but i was looking at her recently and i was like wow she was big then and now she's just math masses she's completely amorphous like you know she was sitting in a folding chair and both both sides of her of her ass were hanging out i saw her from the back and then someone's like oh so and so's here and i'm like you should say, you should say hi to her and i'm like what where I was looking around, I was literally like, where is she? And they're like, oh, she's over there. And I was just like, oh, yeah, um, I'll go over and say hi. And she responded to me kind of atypically. She seemed a little embarrassed to see me. Um, like, and, and then later on when I was trying to be, uh, trying to be a nice guy and I was trying to catch up with her, she was just like ignoring me and kind of shrugging me off. And I was just like, wow, you know what? I made the right decision. You know, even if she was like, you know, she lost all that weight and she was a supermodel because of who she is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have regret, regretted my decision, especially not after going MGTOW. So there it is, gentlemen, you know, with any red pill philosophy, it will be proven. And the truth is like a diamond in a rock tumbler. You give it enough time. What are you going to pull out? You're going to pull out a diamond. And there's nothing but, you know, powdered rock dust all in there. It's going to, the truth will pulverize anything. There's, there's nothing stronger. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Get safe by going MGTOW. And stay safe by staying MGTOW. I'll see you guys in the next one.